Galwar. Yeah. Galwar from Air Force Research Lab. Ali uh, received his uh, back through the BS degree from Loyola University and uh, his PhD degree from University in the Northern of Chicago. And since 2014, yeah. he, uh, he has been in uh, Air Force Research Lab. Today he's going to tell us that the uh, chemical exfoliation method to make a uh, layered uh, transition metal dipalcum similar materials. And uh, so they don't use the lithium, they just use uh, chemistry. This is physicist's uh, interpretation of what they do. Uh, but what I find uh, very interesting is they have been and able to apply this technique to exfoliate a wide variety of uh, uh, TMDs, including telluride materials. Okay. All right, thanks for the introduction. Um, and so, um, I guess I'll give a little um, brief introduction about that. And uh, so, a lot of people here are working with like vapor based deposition, ALD, MPE. And so, there's another side of the community that's worried about. Um, producing bulk quantities of exfoliated two-layer monolayer materials. Um, and so the application space that we live in is a little bit different than your application space or people that are doing like electronic grade um, digital deposition or growth. And so kind of just want to give a little um, insight into what other types of um, preparation methods there are for these TMDs and it really depends on what type of um, application or integrated structure that you're looking for in the final, um, in the final application for your work. Um, and so just a brief um, overview of types of, you know, the material space that we're living in and um, what types of properties arise from them. And so um, at, at, at the far end we have uh, molecular types of interactions that are dominated by um, quantized electronic states, quantum processes, and then um, bulk or continuous types of properties. And so for nanomaterials, we're kind of living in this region where these um, size dependent properties start emerging. So these mesoscopic properties are um, a function of how co confined the um, electron is or um, electrons are in these materials. And so um, very similar to molecular uh, molecules are zero D or dot type materials, and so they they're characterized by having discrete electronic structures. And these types of materials have been um, scaled up and implemented into um, um, optical applications as well as um, in quantum dot TVs. And it's because of their um, high quantum efficiencies for their fluorophores and um, their their very narrow uh, emission windows because of uh, their discrete energy transitions. And then moving uh, towards um, a little bit uh, lower dimensional material is, or sorry, higher dimensional is uh, 1D type wire materials that have um, interesting properties in terms of uh, ballistic transport because uh, if you if you can scale down the dimensions of the, the wire walls to the, the main free path of an electron, um, you're, you don't get diffusion properties of electrons colliding with each other. And so the electrons will only start um, interacting with uh, your material walls. And so if you can start engineering um, your materials and interfaces to a point, um, you can start getting a ballistic trans, uh, transport of electron conduction. Um, and this is very analogous to uh, uh, materials like white guys. Um, where the photons are ballistically transported throughout these materials. Um, and then getting to the, the meat of our talk, um, the 2D plate-like materials, um, they have a planar electron delocalization, so they have this large surface area where electrons can be delocalized, um, and this gives interesting um, opportunities for uh, anisotropic transport of um, electrons, conductivity, uh, thermal transport. Um, and really, uh, we, we've been looking at looking at, at these materials in flexible electronics. Um, and so, taking a closer look at the 2D material space, I kind of break it down into um, two classes of materials. The first class are the single structure, single composition, um, relatively inert materials. And um, 
These include uh, graphene, uh, boron nitride, phosphorine. So a lot of people are familiar with these. Um, and their characteristics are because they are single structure and composition, um, it's difficult to tune the properties of these materials. And so graphene, um, this is zero gap a semiconductor, phosphorine has a low band gap, and trying to modulate those properties with graphene and coral nitride, it's, it's a little bit difficult. And so you need high doping levels for graphene or surface modifications to really start tuning the properties um, of these first generation materials. Um, and then looking uh, at the second generation materials, um, we have a single framework of structure. However, um, there's a large diverse composition for these materials. And because of this, we have a very um, large property suite. And uh, these include the frost guides that are uh, tin lead based, as well as um, metal carbon nitrides or the maxines. Um, and so you have this uh, ionic metal carbon bond uh, or nitrogen bond that's separated by this uh, group 13 or 14 um, phase. And so etching out this uh, metal phase will generate these uh, maxine type uh, materials that are um, that have very interesting <coughs> applications for water purification um, and uh, ionic transport because they are um, ionic um, layer materials. Um, and then uh, a lot of people here are familiar with uh, transition metal that chalcogonides, but um, they're also part of a larger family of uh, layered chalcogonides. And so um, for the remainder of the talk, I'll be focusing on these uh, TMD materials. And so TMDs are a, there's a large property suite um, available to them. Uh, they're generally group four to seven transition metals um, there are group 9 and 10 uh, TMDs available, but um, they've been less investigated, and um, so we won't really focus on, on that. Um, and so the general structure for uh, TMDs are you have a transition metal sandwich between uh, two chalcogens, in this case MLS2. Um, the intralayer bonding between the metal and the chalcogen is very strong, and this compromises uh, in the individual sheet. <laughs> And individual sheets are stacked together um, that are separated by a Van der Waals gap that's typically less than one nanometer. And so this, uh, the sheet, um, the, the Van der Waals gap is a weak interaction, and so you can get delamination of these materials um, under the proper conditions. And so um, in addition to um, having a large um, library of compounds, you also have um, many different phases for these materials. They can be in the metallic or semiconducting uh, phase, um, and that deals with the atomic arrangement of the atoms, which uh, will affect the um, D orbital splitting of the metal center. And so you can get um, different types of um, phases for these materials. Um, and finally, as, a, as the last point of um, uh, property, um, you can start tuning the thickness of these materials. And so you can get um, a transformation of electronic um, and thermal properties of these materials as you reduce uh, the layer thickness from bulk crystallites to bilayers, monolayers. And so um, a lot of emergent properties um, occur at the monolayer limit. And so that's why the uh, vapor phase uh, techniques are so widely used is that you can easily target monolayer species. Um, and so, um, because of all this, you get a large window of opportunity for tuning morphology, or sorry, tuning the light matter interaction through morphology, dimensionality, and composition of these materials. And so, um, they have a lot of interesting um, application space that we can start looking into. Um, but uh, it's 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 nice looking at the application space. But if we look a little bit deeper into um, the constraints associated with different types of applications. Um, we can start looking at different processing methods to obtain the material that is best suited for our um, of our integrated application. So um, we can start looking at um, low dimensional electronics for these materials, where um, it's recently been shown that you can uh, start making heterostructures of, of different TMDs as well as. Uh, graphene hexaboral nitride to make um, uh, low dimensional transistors or electronics and for these types of applications you're really um, the, the purity and interface contact between 
layers or between your electrical contacts are very important. And so you need high control of that type of interface. Um, while if you're looking at sensors versus catalysis, um, this is where uh, molecules will start interacting with the surface in a way that um, you can get an electrical response from these materials, where, be it base pair detection or uh, 